Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me well? My name is Robert Igive. I'm the Dean of the College of Arts and Letters at JMU, and I'll be hosting this webinar, which is a virtual version of our summer springboard. And I have some slides which I will use to guide us through the presentation to give everyone on the call an opportunity to hear about the College of Arts and Letters, to learn some things about JMU, perhaps some which you know already and others which um, you don't, and to give you an opportunity also to ask some questions. Uh, I think there should be plenty of time for Q&A, and I have my uh, orientation uh, staff uh, standing by who can also assist with some of the uh, answers to the questions. So uh, some people are still entering the room, so I'm just going to um, make time here a little bit by telling you that I'm not indeed floating over the quad of the College of Arts and Letters, though that is indeed where we are located. Uh, if you are standing on the quad, the buildings of the college are all around you, and that's one of the reasons I've chosen it for today's background. Um, our signature building is right behind my left ear, and that is Wilson Hall. And maybe you have been there already for a Choices or an open house event. It is uh, absolutely fabulous. It's the home of our history department. And uh, you will find on warm days, especially throughout the year, that the quad is a beehive of student activity. Um, not very much studying going on, I, I would say, but that's fine. Uh, students need to recreate. So you'll see games of Frisbee and cornhole and all kinds of other amusements going on uh, throughout the year on the quad. You can imagine that after a couple of years of COVID that we were uh, just delighted to see the students return to the quad this spring in great numbers. And uh, it was such a delight to see. All right, I, I think we're getting ready to start here. So I'm going to move to the slideshow and uh, then we will go through our presentation uh, bit by bit. So just bear with me for a moment uh, while I get this going. Okay. All right, so um, this is the College of Arts and Letters. Uh, we are the largest academic unit on campus in terms of faculty. We are the third largest in terms of majors. And of course, we are the best. And one of the reasons that you know, I say that with a, a mixture of irony and, and also seriousness is that we take great pride in what we do here in the college to live out the mission of JMU, which is there printed on your screen. I'll, I'll try not to read slides for you. I know you can do it well yourself. But um, the, the part that means the most to me is the part about leading mean, meaningful lives. Uh, I will tell you uh, from the beginning that uh, I'm not only the Dean and a faculty member in the Department of English, but I'm also a JMU parent. So um, when my wife and I were thinking about where one of our youngsters was going to go for university, uh, JMU was the choice. And um, in case you're wondering, I, I don't receive any discounts for that. So I, I pay absolutely full fare. And we had lots of choices, but it was clear to us that JMU was the, the best place, the best fit for our kid. Um, you'll find at JMU that the students are deserved in their uh, reputation for being warm and welcoming and friendly and embracing. Um, this is absolutely a, a hallmark of our education, and uh, we, we really, really value it. Um, it means um, that the campus has a family feel. JMU is well regarded for that. And uh, it means that students can feel a sense of belonging here. And you'll see that uh, on your slide as well. And it also means that when students are um, in need, and we know these days that, that many students have heightened needs as a result of everything that we've been through the last couple of years, that you'll find a, an empathetic and supportive community. Now, I will also say that we have high academic expectations of students. It's not really possible to coast through JMU. You have to do the work and the work will be rewarded. 
if you remember nothing else from this presentation, um, this is directed to the students. I will say to you as a faculty member at universities for over 30 years and here at JMU, that the most important thing about your beginning career as a university student is to remember this. Like most things in life, you get exactly what you put into it. So the question I like to ask students is what do you want from your college experience? In four years, where do you want to be? Not what somebody else's idea is, um, however well-intentioned, but what do you want? And to think about that as you start your college education. People come to college for all kinds of reasons, some to get a job, some to make friends and uh, deepen relationships, some to get away from um, the, the strictures and the requirements of living at home. All, all of those are perfectly valid reasons. But the most important thing that happens at college is that you arrive as a somebody, an 18 to 21 year old, and four years later, you emerge as someone else. And that process, that crystallization of your selfhood, of your identity, is absolutely critical, and, and we support that at JMU. All right, um, let's talk a little bit more about uh, the college and what we offer in particular. So each of you will have a major, uh, one of the 10 academic units in the college, and these majors are divided into three broad areas. The humanities, that would be English, history, philosophy, languages, and religion. The social sciences, that's political science, international affairs, justice studies, uh, sociology, and the communication and media arts. That would be the School of Communication or ESCOM, as we call it here, writing and rhetoric and technical communication, that, that's one department, and also um, the School of Media Arts and Design, and we call that SMAD. There are a lot of acronyms at JMU, and, and you will learn them. Uh, in due time. So the special thing about JMU is that it combines two things that are often not seen in one university. That is the scale and scope of a large university with all of the opportunities and resources that come with it. And also the small intimate experience of a selective liberal arts college. So in the latter category, you might think of places like the University of Richmond or Washington and Lee. They're, they're very small, they're very hands-on. We have that hands-on experience, but what we have that they don't have is the scale and the scope and all of the learning opportunities that come with a large-sized university. Now, my other kid uh, chose to go down the road, down the 81, to a university with a strange feathered mascot you may have heard of. They also have garish orange colors on their uh, regalia. And uh, he did just fine there. Um, but, you know, he also did feel, and he said to me, that it was a very, very large place and it was easy to get lost. And that's not really the case at JMU. We look after our students and we provide that family feel, that intimate environment of being at a place that really cares for students. Now, um, the other thing that I would say about the College of Arts and Letters in particular is that we really believe in the value of a liberal arts education as the best foundation for thriving in the 21st century. That means that when you graduate from here and along the way, you are going to be acquiring skills, you might call them superpowers, that will enable you to adapt and to grow as the world changes. And we've seen nothing but change the last few years. The, the swiftness, the speed, the scope of change in really just the last three years has been incredible. And people um, with the kind of education that we offer here can feel comfortable about being able to adapt to all those changes because you will have that broad foundation in the liberal arts, which is so important. All right, let me give you a bit more specific overview of the College of Arts and Letters. Again, we're quite large as a college, uh, over 3,000 students with majors in the college. Uh, we have a wonderful faculty of 270 full-time faculty, 
And something that I would say also distinguishes us from other universities is that our faculty are both committed to teaching and to research. And usually you find one or the other, but not the two. And so you will find faculty who are absolutely at the forefront of their areas. I'll just crow a little bit because I'm very proud of the faculty here. Last year, we had one of our history professors win one of the world's most prized uh, fellowships. It's called the Guggenheim Foundation Fellowship. And uh, it was just such a delight to us to see Professor Goopser's name in a fold out section of the New York Times, along with the names of professors who teach at other schools you may have heard of, like Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Chicago, Northwestern, Berkeley, UCLA. All of those people were there and also our faculty member from the history department at James Madison University. And Mike is also a very, very devoted teacher. So uh, this is the kind of learning experience that you can expect from the people that work here. We have a range of programs, uh, something that I'll say uh, at another time in this presentation, but I'll say it here as well, which is that if you start JMU and you think, uh, you're a major in X, let's say you're a major in SCOM. And after a semester or a year, you decide, no, you really don't want to do that. You'd rather do media arts and design or WRTC or English or any of the other programs. It's quite easy and common here to change majors. Many universities make that very difficult. But here at JMU, we understand that you may not know exactly who you want to be when you arrive at JMU and we want to support you in that. And you can also decide to do something else in a different college if you want to uh, get a degree in business or in engineering or health sciences. We absolutely support the wishes and desires of our students to learn and grow while they're here. So just because you filled out a, a major on your application some months ago does not mean that we're gonna shackle you to that. You, you can choose another major if you wish. And we have learning support to provide the help that you need to make the good choice for you. We also have um, a, another feature of our program uh, that you may not have given much thought to, but I urge you to as you are starting your career at JMU. And that is to combine your first major in one of two ways, either with another major, that's a double major, in the College of Arts and Letters or across the College of Arts and Letters in another college, or to do what many hundreds of students do at JMU, which is to combine your first major with one or more academic minors. And a minor is a small basket of courses that is large enough to give you a seriousness of purpose, some real depth in a field, but is uh, just short of doing another major uh, to the parents on the call, I can tell you uh, that you can rest assured you can do this, your youngster can do this in four years quite easily. And we have, again, many hundreds of students who graduate each year with a major and one or more minors. And in the College of Arts and, Loan, Arts and, Arts and Letters alone, we have over 60 of these minors. And um, there are some that are coming online. So at the bottom of this slide, you'll see that we have pre-professional advising in pre-law. Well, we spoke to some of our JMU alums who ended up becoming lawyers. We don't have our own law school, but many, many dozens of our alumni go on to become lawyers graduating from other law schools. And we listened to them and what they said was, you know, it would be great if JMU had a minor that was specifically for students who are interested in a legal career. So we have developed and will soon launch a minor in legal studies, which is a cross-disciplinary program. That means it draws courses from different departments uh, and it's grounded in philosophy, which is great for studying for the LSAT. Uh, it has courses in history, in political science, in justice studies, and in a variety of other fields. And any major may choose to take this minor. And it's the same with all of our minors. You don't have to uh, apply to take these minors. You just 
pull a drop down menu and you say I'd like to do this minor and that's a good way of enhancing your undergraduate experience. All right, um, let's carry on here and talk about some of the other unique learning opportunities beyond the classroom that we offer at James Madison University in the College of Arts and Letters. So uh, something I'd like to alert all students to and, and parents as well is the real change that has happened in American higher education over the last couple of decades. And that's this, which is that when I was in college back in another century, um, undergraduates were not imagined as students who did research. Research happened, but it was mostly for graduate students, for students pursuing master's degrees and doctoral degrees. And that has completely changed. And JMU is on the forefront of innovative universities that are offering a whole suite of enhanced opportunities for undergraduate students to pursue advanced work in their bachelor's degree programs. And as a, a matter of detail, what that means is, let's say uh, you're particularly interested in the causes of political polarization. Um, we all know from watching the headlines that our country has become more politically polarized than in um, many, many years. And it's been widely commented on, but we still don't know precisely why that's so and, and what's driving it and, and whether there are remedies for it. So let's say you're a political science major or you're a history major or you're a justice studies major or, or some other major, and you're interested in the causes of this extreme political um, divide that's happening in our country. Well, you can work with any number of faculty experts to engage in cutting edge research about that subject. That means working alongside a professor to help understand it, uh, not to tell you what to think about it, but to help you understand the causes and to help you formulate what we call a research question. And learning how to do this is incredibly valuable as a skill, whether or not you want to go to graduate school. So for example, there are lots of jobs for people uh, in this world of the humanities and social sciences in management consulting. Management consultants are experts who arrive at a corporation or an institution, and they analyze the conditions, the budget, the personnel, the mission of these institutions, and they make recommendations uh, to the stockholders or to the chief executives of the company about what steps they might want to take to improve their organization. That's fundamentally what management consulting is. Um, but to do that and to be able to get those jobs, you have to have research skills. You have to understand how you begin to formulate the right question. What is the data that you're going to draw on? How do you assemble and display this data? How do you compare it to other data. These are all really advanced and highly in-demand skills. And you can obtain those skills by engaging in undergraduate research. Now, I want to dispel a myth here. Uh, so I began college as a computer science major. I did a lot of science classes. And um, indeed, I did see a lot of students doing research. And if I look at university web pages across the country, which I do as part of my job, uh, seeing what other people are up to, I often see pages devoted to undergraduate research with a very familiar image. It's a student with safety goggles on in a chemistry lab, or a bio lab, or a nutrition and food sciences lab, and sometimes in a white coat, a lab coat. And indeed, that is a description of undergraduate research, but it's not the only kind of research that happens in this world. Uh, think, for example, of the research that needed to occur during the pandemic. Of course, a lot of it had to do with epidemiology and indeed uh, involved people in safety goggles and lab coats and, and even more extensive safety gear. But it also involved understanding how information about the pandemic was being communicated who was being reached and who wasn't, who needed to be persuaded uh, to take a vaccine. What were the reasons why some people resisted a vaccine? 
those were not laboratory research projects. Those were social science research projects. And just as important to understanding not the behavior of the virus so much in a human organism or in an animal, but the behavior of the virus in society, which is one of the things we're still grappling with. So these and many other research questions await the curious student. And here at JMU, we're very proud of all of the opportunities that we give undergraduates who are curious about the world and want to do work beyond the classroom. And I urge you, if you are intrigued by this possibility, just to ask your professors after class. Professors love it when you talk to them after class. Um, very often they, they feel like the Maytag repairman, uh, you know, the loneliest person in town. Uh, and you can make great relationships with professors by asking them what they do their research on. And do they have any opportunities for students like yourself? I'll give you one more example, which is uh, very near and dear to me because it involves one of my very favorite faculty members, uh, Bernard Kausler, in the international affairs branch of political science in our poli sci department. Anyway, um, Professor Kausler applied for and won a major university grant. And uh, what he did was very typical of our JMU professors. He designed a research project that necessitated undergraduate students to work with him. And his particular area of research is on uh, international security and on war zones. And he's particularly interested in the conflict in the Middle Eastern nation of Yemen. And so he was able, without actually visiting Yemen, which is kind of dangerous, uh, to involve students in understanding all of the places in Yemen that um, had been the site of uh, aerial conflict that had bombs dropped on them from mostly Saudi planes. And he was able through intelligence networks that he has developed over many years to build a database where anyone in the world could see the places in Yemen that were being bombed in this war. And undergraduate students played a vital role in developing this website, gathering the information, helping him understand this research tool. So um, I could give you many, many other examples. There are some here on the webpage and you can just ask any professor at JMU, hey, what are you working on when you're not teaching and are there opportunities for students? And, and often you will find the answer is yes. Okay, the other thing about uh, research experiences, which I also recommend is that anytime you want to have a big role in an organization, um, that role is going to involve communication, the ability to talk about what your company or your organization or your outfit does and why it matters. And so we also offer in our research programs here at JMU lots of opportunities for students to get experience in presenting their research, talking to people who don't know anything about what you're interested in and getting them interested and learning to persuade and learning them to involve them in the research question that you have. So this means presenting at conferences at JMU, which we have many, and also others where we take students uh, from a variety of departments to go present their research uh, across the nation. All right, um, while we're on the subject of innovation, I also want to draw your attention to um, a wonderful sandbox we have here at JMU. And if you are interested in this, you can just Google JMU X Labs and you can come up with lots of hits that describe um, media coverage of this wonderful outfit that we have on campus. Now, X Labs is not something that I invented, it's not in the College of Arts and Letters, but the College of Arts and Letters plays a very uh, significant role in it. We have a lot of professors who are involved in X Labs ventures and students as well. So in a nutshell, what X Labs is, is a kind of incubator. Now, most of your education, as it is across the country, will be done through courses that you take, where you're a student along with other students and the syllabus is generated by the professor. That's the list of the work that you're going to do. 
you do the reading, you do the writing, you do the projects, you get a grade at the end of the term. That's most of what you do. Um, perhaps you get involved in undergraduate research to supplement that. But you can also take another kind of course, which is a project-based course. So instead of, let's say, uh, learning about the causes of the French Revolution, it's a very important subject, um, you might take a course, let's say, in innovating the archives. That's one of those that we have put on this slide. What does that mean? Well, uh, our library, like many other libraries, has lots of records and papers and video cassettes and DVDs and other kind of media that are accessible only to those who physically come to the library. But one of the major things that's happened in the internet revolution is that a lot of information like this worldwide is now being made accessible through the technology of digital media. And so we got together a group of students, some who are interested in the world of libraries and information, others who are interested in poetry because we have a wonderful poetry archive here, the Furious Flower uh, Archive of Black Poets. Uh, it's in its 27th year, uh, it's nationally renowned. And some who are interested in culture and history and literature. And we brought these groups of people together with an X Labs facilitator. And this is unlike a, a, a course that you would normally take. So there was no uh, schedule of readings. There was no uh, set of papers that students had to write. Nothing was predetermined. It was kind of open-ended and it was group-based and project-oriented. And for the um, adults on this call, you know that a lot of work is just like this. Your boss doesn't tell you exactly what you do. Um, you're told, hey, tackle this problem, you know, go fix it and come back when you're done. Um, give me a regular update perhaps, but you know, go forth and, and solve this problem. Um, often there is no recipe, there is no established solution, there is no trailblazer, you have to do it yourself. And that's what this X Labs outfit on campus is designed to help students understand by giving students the chance to work in project-based learning with other students and you might call them faculty facilitators because they don't lecture, they help students figure out solutions to problems that students themselves want to solve. And that's a really cool thing. And there are uh, dozens of these courses uh, I urge you, if this is the kind of work that you are interested in, to uh, check out the X Labs. It's a really great thing. All right, um, let's talk about another uh, key facet of the College of Arts and Letters. It's people, it's students, it's faculty. So something that all of us who are in higher education have noticed the last 10 years or so, really accelerating the last five to seven years, is that Students are coming to college campuses all across the country, and they're looking to make the world a better place, a more just, a more equitable, more fair uh, place than the one that they inherited. And that's really exciting. We, we support this. We provide, again, myriad opportunities for students to engage in this work, both on campus, in our community, and beyond. And I want to tell you about something that's very inspiring that happened right before the pandemic. It was December of 2019, and I was invited to attend an alumni student meeting where we had JMU alums uh, who were talking about their experiences in the nonprofit sector. And I thought maybe half a dozen or, or maybe 10 students would show up to this, and I wanted to come to support you know, these hearty few. Well, imagine my surprise when I went into this uh, big meeting room and there are about 150 students there. And uh, the hands were up, the questions were being fired, alums from all across the nonprofit sector in government work and universities in non-governmental organizations and overseas organizations like the Peace Corps and others were speaking with students about how you might um, have a, a career, you might have a life in any one of these uh, organizations. And it was 
really inspiring to see all these students. You know, of course, every student has a concern about, uh, you know, what are you going to do with that major and, um, you know, how are you going to get employment? That's always on our mind. We do a lot to prepare students for that. I'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, here it was, you know, right before the pandemic, no one knew what was coming in February of 2020. And these students were showing up and they were saying, we are really interested in helping to better our world. Uh, so we have a faculty, we have programs, we have students who can connect uh, students who are interested in these, this kind of work locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally to engage in these activities. All right, speaking of international, uh, JMU is one of the top universities in the country for global opportunities. And I'm gonna throw another acronym at you, but it's one that you should know. It's CGE, which is the Center for Global Engagement. And the Center for Global Engagement is a kind of clearinghouse and zone of connection between the world and JMU. So every year, hundreds of students leave Virginia and they go to all corners of the globe to pursue learning opportunities in, in Europe, in Asia, in Africa, in South America, all over. We even have, um, which I find kind of funny for this uh, Californian, a study abroad program in Los Angeles. Now, uh, LA might seem like another world, but uh, it's in fact, as so far as I can tell, still a part of the United States. And uh, the reason that it's in CGE is that it's a study away program. And it's that program is particularly targeted at students in our wonderful program of media, arts and design or SMAD. So all the SMAD majors on the call or prospective SMAD majors uh, I went out there a couple of weeks ago to visit with alums and uh, to talk to people in the program. We have a, a cohort of students out there right now. Every summer for the past 10 years, uh, we have had students go to Burbank, California and live in an apartment which JMU leases and study with faculty from JMU and to work in internships throughout the film, media and television industry which of course is the largest in Los Angeles and one of the great economic drivers uh, in our country. So uh, I was really inspiring again to be out there to see the, the passion of JMU alums for students, to see how they were connecting them to really great internships at companies, large and small, 20th Century Fox, Paramount, Sony Studios, all the places that you, know, you have heard of, but also lots of smaller outfits that uh, are the sort of meat and potatoes of the Los Angeles film and TV industry. I was also really lucky um, in the past couple of years to be a visitor for JMU study abroad programs in London, England and in Florence, Italy. Uh, and so if you are interested in any of these programs or others that I, I have not mentioned, there are too many to mention, please have a look at the Center for Global Engagement website before you start your fall term and pay attention to announcements from CGE throughout the academic year to alert you to opportunities to study abroad. Now, some of these study abroad programs also have internships. So for example, the uh, Los Angeles program, as I mentioned, is an internship-based program as is the London, England program. So if you go to London, England for the summer or the semester or, or the following semester, the spring, any one of those terms, you can elect not only to study there in England, which is a great thing, but you can also work in England. You can work for a bank or you can work for a, um, a producer. You can work for a government agency. There are dozens and dozens of opportunities there uh, a few minutes ago, I mentioned that many students at JMU double major. So one of the most intriguing that I have encountered in my time here was somebody I met who was a student in the JMU London Study Abroad program. And she was combining a major in statistics and media arts and design. 
and she was in London because she was interested in the quantitative side of the media industry. She wanted to work in the back office, you know, not making media, but helping people understand quantitatively its reach and scope, which is what her statistics background was giving her really interesting combination of majors. So you'll see some stats here on this slide. Um, we're very proud of the role we play in the College of Arts and Letters. Uh, faculty take students on small trips all over the world every summer for spring break, for uh, fall term, for spring term. And if this is uh, of interest to you, you have found the right university because we really excel at this. And I urge all of you uh, to think about this as a necessary part of your education. Our world is getting smaller. Everybody says it. It's becoming um, more intimate. The necessity to know more about uh, the, the world, its history, its conflicts, its cultures, histories, language, traditions is increasing. It's not decreasing. And this can be a real leg up for you as you enter the workforce. All right. Student clubs and organizations. Uh, there are too many to list. That's a the theme of this presentation. I understand. Uh, and yet I want to highlight a few which are in the College of Arts and Letters and employ students from all majors. So uh, we have a wonderful yearbook called The Bluestone. We have a great newspaper, The Breeze. Um, there are some very illustrious alums out there in the world of media who have worked on The Breeze. I mentioned uh, my trip to Los Angeles to visit with JMU alumni there. One of the people that I met is the Senior Vice President for Corporate Communications for the Los Angeles Football Club. That's the soccer team, the MLS soccer team out there. And it's a big job and he has a high profile career. And he started out as a Breeze reporter covering JMU football a long time ago. Um, we also have um, alums like, uh, you may have heard of this guy on CNN, Jim Acosta who is a graduate of our journalism program, and he's a big supporter of the JMU Breeze, and many, many others, uh, such as Lindsay Zarniak, who works for ESPN covering sports. All right, um, in the world of politics, we have um, wonderful opportunities there for students interested in model unions, like we have the European Union and the African Union, and we have simulations of those where students work with students across uh, the United States and the world, on simulating what it looks like to be a member of those large international organizations. Our debate and individual events that's giving um, performative speeches, those teams are ranked very high annually. Um, we had a great, great year in 2022. Our students travel all over the country and compete effectively. Any student may do speech and debate or individual events. You don't have to be a communications major. And then we also have a variety of clubs in departments. So um, one of the great, great clubs is in the School of Communication or SCOM. For any of you who are interested in a career in public relations, we actually have our own student run PR firm. Uh, and it's local. It has clients. It, it bills. It, it makes money. And it runs just like a big ad agency on Madison Avenue or in DC, San Francisco, or LA. Same structure with a CEO, a chief financial officer, a CIO, chief information officer, and account executives who go out and work with clients in the local community and learn how to do the business by actually doing it. So they're reading about it, of course, in their classes, but they're also learning a great deal by running their own firm. So opportunities like this abound at JMU. There are many, many student honor clubs throughout the college. Um, these are not to be confused with uh, sororities and fraternities that are of a social nature. These are uh, sort of intellectual and um, discipline-based clubs that support particular kinds of work. So Sigma Tau Delta is the Honor Society for English. And you can see all the others listed here. I won't read them for you, but if you are a ambitious student, these are really great things to get involved in and also great ways to meet people. 
All right, now here comes the part of the presentation, which is really about, uh, just wanna keep my eye on the time here, uh, which is really about translating everything that you have learned at JMU and will learn into the working world. And uh, we take this very seriously. I am just about to um, hire a person in a brand new position, which I created uh, this year, who is going to be a kind of college-based professional connector, a networker, who is going to connect students in all our majors to internships and employment opportunities right out of the College of Arts and Letters. Um, that person will be starting before you start your fall term. Uh, here we have a couple of wonderful alums who've done great things with their careers here. Uh, you may mention that distinguished gentleman uh, on the slide there, that's Anthony Fauci, of course, uh, you know, perhaps the most ubiquitous scientist in the last three years on television. Anyway, uh, our wonderful Allison Capley, who graduated in 2016, got a chance to work with Dr. Fauci um, before he was so famous. She's a medical writer. She got a degree in what we call WRTC. It's a mouthful, writing, rhetoric, and technical communication. And she has a glittering career as a science writer. So she has translated her interest in writing, her interest in science into a career as a science writer. And boy, do we need people to help explain science to us these days. How about Dan Richardson, uh, who graduated a few years before that? Um, he went on to get a law degree at the University of Virginia Law School, one of the toughest law schools to gain entrance to in the country, one of the very best. And uh, he ended up clerking for uh, Justice Breyer uh, of the Supreme Court. And to be a clerk to a Supreme Court justice is about um, the most lofty you can get as a law student. And he has a great career now, of course, as a lawyer. Um, this video that I have linked here, I don't have confidence in our link. So um, I think this PowerPoint is gonna be shared with all of you and you can watch it yourself. But uh, April Armstrong, who graduated even earlier, uh, is the former president of our liberal arts alumni advisory board. She advises me and uh, my leadership team. She graduated with degrees in French and communication, and she has her own consulting firm under her own name. And in this video, she talks um, about this idea that you see there in purple, which is that these critical thinking skills in her experience of professional life are the most important superpower. They're not the soft skills, they're the hard ones. And that's what we teach here and that's what you will learn. All right, um, we're getting to the end of this and I, I know it's been a lot to absorb. Don't worry if you haven't remembered everything, there will be lots of opportunities uh, to reinforce this subject as you work your way through JMU. But uh, I, as I've mentioned, I've worked at uh, some different universities uh, and I can tell you that JMU has one of the most loyal and supportive alumni groups I have ever seen or heard of. And it is just incredible the way that the JMU Dukes, the alumni of this university, reach out and help students get a leg up in this world. It, it's, you know, a truism that it's not what you know, but who you know. I think it's what you know and who you know. That's my um, friendly amendment. But who you know certainly matters. And so I want to give you a couple of examples of, of how we um, make this concrete for students. It can be hard when you're a student and certainly some of you may be thinking, gosh, you know, I haven't even started JMU. And there's this guy talking to me about, you know, people who graduated from JMU 20 years ago. That's, that's so remote, I, I can't think about it. Well, um, let me urge you to take a moment to think about it. And that's because having this incredible network, that's what it is. It's a network of people who want to help you is a real value added component of what we offer here. So um, there are dozens of ways in which you can activate and connect to this network. I'm gonna give you some uh, examples that are top of mind for me. 
So every year we have a career conference here on the JMU campus specifically for arts and letters students. And what we do is that we invite alumni in a variety of professions and from a variety of majors to return to campus. Most of them do it uh, on their own dime, sometimes flying all the way from the West Coast to do this. To come back to campus, we invite them to spend the day here and meet with students to do resume workshops, to do mock interviewing, to talk about their industries, to share insights. Um, we have also learned that many alumni love coming here because they're secretly hiring. They don't tell us that, but we, we figured it out that they come to scout the talent and many job offers are actually made at the career conference. And I've been telling you about um, various alums that, that I've gotten to know, and, and I wanna mention another one here because he is just a perfect example of what I'm describing here. Uh, this man is a senior vice president for one of the most successful Silicon Valley uh, firms in the entire world. It's called Salesforce, and Salesforce is um, operating behind most of the email that you receive from companies, from stores, from corporations, and so forth. They're the leading firm globally in what is called CRM, or Customer Relations Management. And so they help companies understand who their clients are and how to communicate with them. Now, you might think that this guy is a software engineer because it's a big software enterprise. He's actually not. He's a former English major and a communication studies major. And he has a great story to tell. And he tells it every year to students, which is how did he go from being a literary studies student to working on the top floors of one of the biggest companies in Silicon Valley that actually have the tallest building in San Francisco, the Salesforce Tower. They have Salesforce Towers in lots of other major cities. Anyway, how did that happen? Well, um, while he was at JMU in the 1980s, he started getting interested in um, the world of technology, but he didn't want to make computers or program them. Um, computers were big bulky things. No one was dreaming of a desktop or even a, a cell phone at that time. Uh, so he started uh, writing a little newsletter, um, which ended up becoming folded into a magazine called PC World. And that's short for Personal Computing World. And it started covering the personal computing industry. And our alum, John, um, worked his way, you know, writing a about this and that product. And eventually a company that he wrote about reached out to him and said, hey, uh, we noticed your article in PC World and you know, it's a really great article. Uh, we're wondering if you'd like to come work for us to help us understand our competition because you're so good at analyzing and researching. And if you've been listening to what I've been saying, that's a a uh, very important superpower, that ability to analyze and research. And he said yes, and he got in on the ground floor of what would become a huge empire called Salesforce. And um, so that's part of the story. It's a great story about um, you know rising to the top of a very competitive industry, and it's valuable just for that. But John has come back to JMU year after year after year. Doesn't have to. We don't pay him. He comes back because he wants to. And he flies from San Francisco. He comes to JMU, usually on the red eye. Uh, he's really tired. Uh, he's got a big job and very busy guy. And he arrives here and he spends all day talking with students about how to translate their learning here and their courses here and their education here into a variety of fields that he knows about. And he's just one of many who do that every single year. So um, many departments also have their own alumni networking uh, events like uh, Media Arts and Design or SMAD or political science. Uh, our political science alumni come from Washington DC mostly, which is two hours away. They visit campus and they spend time with students doing exactly the same thing. All right, um, coming to the end, this is an overview of everything I've been saying about the superpowers. 
year after year, when universities survey employers, what they say is we want people who can do the following, which is exactly what we teach here. They can solve complex problems, not simple ones, complex ones. They can work in teams. They can cooperate with each other. They can collaborate. They work hard. JMU students are known for being roll up sleeves, grinder, work all day, get it done um, kind of people. We have a great reputation out there for producing students who will really put their shoulder to the wheel. And, and that's uh, what we value and what we teach here. Of course, having those quantitative and qualitative skills, which are so important in understanding any complex problem, the ability to write and speak well or communicate, uh, a tenacity and a capacity for leadership, and um, having what we also call cross-cultural or intercultural competence, working with people unlike yourself. Very, very important as our world becomes more and more varied. All right, this is the last slide and um, we save the best for last. And I want to leave all the parents with that number. 97% of our students year after year enjoy success after graduating from the College of Arts and Letters at JMU. By far the most uh, go into work right from our degrees. Some others go into grad school, some go into um, religious organizations, they, they go into the ministry. Um, a very, very small number of students six months out after JMU are still looking. And that's because of what we have been describing here, which is the very, very hands-on, uh, student-centric, high-touch, high-quality education you get at JMU. So I'm going to see if there are questions that have been posted in the chat, um, and I'll see if anyone has a question that I might be able to answer. If you want to ask your question, please do so in the chat. Uh, I see a couple of questions there. Anyone like to pose a question? I have the patience of Job after 30 years of teaching and I will wait you out. <laughs> but I've just been told we're out of time. I, I went on too long. Uh, anyway, I wanna thank you all for tuning into this uh, presentation. There will be lots of opportunities when you are here to ask all the questions that you have. Uh, we are so excited to see you on campus. You're gonna have a great, great time here. If you need anything at any time as a student or as a parent, do not hesitate to ask. That's why we're here and uh, we are delighted to assist you. Uh, thank you everybody again for coming. And uh, we'll see you in the fall. As we say, go Dukes. <laughs>